another video. Hello, how are we doing? Welcome back. Welcome if you're new. My name is Mel. Hello. I know this is a little bit of a different start to what I typically do in my videos. I'm usually standing up. Today, in reverse, I am sitting down. <laughs> Hello. And I am sitting down today because today we have a little bit of a different vlog. It's something that I have never attempted. Now, last week was a little bit all over the place. I kind of spoke on it on my weekly reading sprints and also on my Patreon sprints that last week was a little bit all over the place in terms of like mental health, stuff in my personal life that just went a little bit crazy and I felt a little bit overwhelmed last week. And I am the type of person that I am constantly working. I am a hands-on individual. And last week was definitely a time where I realized, Mel, you need to take a day off. You just need to chill, order some food, watch some movies, read. So that is what I'm doing today. Today I have self-appointed it as my self-care, just no work day, which rarely happens. Again, I am always doing something. The plans for today are literally reading, doing some skincare, ordering food, which I already did. I already ate breakfast. We had some dim sum and it was so good. Some hand pao, siu mai, hakao, wonton, shrimp wonton in particular, and it was all so good. My brother and I also watched Last Holiday, so it was just a great start to my morning. That's why I rarely reached for my camera, honestly, because it is currently 11.51, and so it was a very slow start to my morning morning, which never happens. Like I literally wake up and I usually just look at my emails. However, I do have reading plans for today. Since I'm doing virtually nothing, I do want to take advantage of that time and just read as much as I can, especially because last week I was a little bit slower with my reading. In fact, the majority of May, I've just been kind of slow in reading. I am currently, oh my God, I can get the book out. I should have thought of this before. I am going to be focusing primarily on The Damned by Renee Adier. This is the second book in the beautiful series. And I am really enjoying this so far in the six pages that I have read. So I am going to be focusing primarily on this, maybe finishing it. I did read The Beautiful in one sitting, so maybe this will be the same case. We shall see. And then I thought it would be really nice to kind of also have shorter reads. That way I can squeeze in a little bit more stuff. And so I did pull out Nick and Charlie, which is the Nick and Charlie novella. I do believe this takes place after volume three, but this one follows Nick as he goes to university. So it does deal with a little bit more of a mature adult theme. I did pull this out and I also pulled out Paradise Kiss, my little omnibus moment, in case I do want to read volume two of this because volume one ended in a cliffhanger, so I definitely want to see what is happening. So I did pull these two out, so we shall see if I get around to these if I finish The Damned. However, there is also the possibility of me starting Shadow of Night, which is the second book in All Souls Trilogy by Deborah Harkness. This is it, the second book in A Discovery of Witches. So I do have options. I am just gonna pull all of them out and see where the day takes me because I really don't know how much reading I'll actually get done. Hopefully a lot, because again, if I'm not doing anything, that means I have all day. <laughs> I also have two things to haul today in the beginning of this reading vlog. First one is Batman the Killing Joke. So I I did give in and buy this. I mentioned in my manga haul slash graphic novel haul that I wanted to get this, especially after buying Hush, which is another Batman like single issue. I really wanted to get this and I went onto thrift books as I typically do and I found a used copy, which was $5 instead of 16. This is the original cover instead of the new one. And I was just like, $5, let me get it. And so I got it, it's here. And then also I received this lovely book from Victoria who is one of my Patreons and subscribers. And this is On the Combo by Angie Thomas. I do have the audiobook for this as well. So I will definitely be reading it with my eyes as I listen along because I do know that the rap verses are wrapped in the audiobook, which is pretty freaking cool. So I definitely want to experience the whole thing. Just thank you so much for sending this my way and thank you for the lovely note. And I am glad that you love it here. I am just so thankful for every single one of you. And so yes, these are the two things that I had to call, thought I'd include them here and now I'm just gonna go to the couch throw myself there get some good reading done and you guys are coming with me so let's go
never done this angle before. Hello. I have made some progress with reading. I actually quite like this angle. This is kind of cool. I am currently on page 109 of The Damned. I'm enjoying this. I don't know if I'd say I'm enjoying this more than I enjoyed The Beautiful. I think if you can see my tabs, I don't know if you guys can distinguish the colors, but for the most part, they're green, which means world building. And I guess what I like so far about this book is that book one was very vague in terms of world building and creature names. Like it doesn't tell you, it doesn't outwardly tell you if somebody's a vampire or a werewolf or a witch or fae or like anything in between. So in this one, anything that was a little bit ominous, a little bit mysterious, that you could, I guess, deduct as a reader, it is outwardly being explained on this one, which I like. So it is kind of like a full circle moment in regards to world building. And we have seen a lot of Nicodemus, which is Bastian's uncle. And most of the world building is being relayed through him because he is so old and you know, he has been around for a while and he knows the ways of the supernatural world. And I like so far that parts of the conflict in here, yes, are classic, I guess, paranormal lore that you'd see, like the feud between werewolves and vampires that is still here. But there are other things that are very, I guess, traditional within the lore of vampirism, where you see that vampires can't go out in the sun, that they need to drink blood, that they need to do XYZ to survive. And I really like the way that Renee Adier so far has subverted all of those classic elements of literature in a way where they fit only the Saint Germain family. And so that part, I guess, has been really refreshing because vampire lore tends to be very repetitive. I am really enjoying this. I was kind of snoozing there for a moment because it is raining. So it's kind of like the perfect mood for reading, but also it just makes me sleepy. Like, I don't know if I'm the only one. I love rain. I love listening to the rain. I love the ambiance of rain. Every single time that I read though, whilst it's raining, I am snoozing. So it's kind of like a, you know, an Achilles heel, but also just an incredible thing. And that is the update that I have for now. I am thinking of maybe ordering some chai latte because I'm in the mood for it. I can't even lie. I had an energy drink. It's been weird not checking my computer all day. I'm not gonna lie. But I have two very <laughs> tempting tabs open. Some people say self-care days don't count as book buying band days. So it's technically on pause today. It's just getting darker and darker because it just keeps on raining. Uh, update though, I did buy some books, so I read it myself today. Apparently, self care days do not count as book buying band days. So, I got myself Uzumaki and then Muse of Nightmares. It is time for me to get back to reading. I will hopefully finish this in no time. I only have like 300 pages left. I say only. I sound so crazy when I say that, but I'm gonna get back to reading now. I'll keep updating you guys as I go. updates. I literally should just like switch positions. Is this better? Is this... This lighting is kind of wonky, but anyways, if all else fails, Renee Adier is really good at writing tension, chemistry, and a good freaking romance. I am on page 224, and if you've read this book, you know exactly what scene I just passed, and it was great. Like, there's a lot of parts of this book that I just don't find myself loving or like caring for. I find that a lot of Bastian's POV is kind of repetitive, and I get it. It's world building. It's just kind of reaffirming where the story is going to go starting from this book. I get it. <laughs> For the sake of like storyline and like plot progression, I understand it. I just don't love it. And so I definitely oftentimes have found myself a little bit just like, let's, let's move past this and like, let's just go to something else. And so I wish there was more Celine in the book. I hope that starting from where I'm at right now, there starts being more Celine in the book because that's just the part that I care about the most. If you know how the first book ends, then you know why I care about it so much. Anyway, Anyways, I just think she's really good at like writing that tension and that
that chemistry and I need more of that. I want more of those scenes. That is what I am yearning for at the moment because just if you know, you know, like just having these two be apart for the majority of this book, I'm just like, can they be together? Can they be happy? Can we just not, can we just not keep them apart anymore? Like this is just what I want. Tiny, tiny, tiny thing. Casimir, gotta love Casimir. Love that Casimir is like a hopeless romantic at heart and is trying to push the Bastion Celine agenda. What is their ship name? Baleen? Bas Baslian? Baslian sounds cool. Whatever their ship name is, I love that Casimir is all up for it and I definitely need more Pippa scenes. I feel like Pippa is a character that serves a lot of comedic relief but is also I know the third book is about Pippa so I'm very interested as to how that is gonna go down but Pippa is definitely a character that I know is gonna provide a lot of conflict from Celine's end based on again what happened in book one so I'm just ready for all of that to unfold and for what is being set up in this book to happen now I don't know because I only have like a hundred and like 80 pages left so like I don't know if that is going to happen in this book or if that is going to happen in The Righteous, which is the third book, which I thought Bastion and Celine's story was gonna be self-contained within the first two books. I don't think it's gonna be. Look at her. She's such an intellectual. Look at us with glasses. Diola. Hi. No te gusta usar los lentes, right? Mm -mm. She looks good, y'all. Like, she, like, we look good with glasses on. Let her know in the comments that she looks good. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. She's freaking crazy, y'all. But. A little bit of an update. I am literally just spinning around in circles, but update though. I did finish The Damned and I guess it was interesting. <laughs> it's kind of like sad to say in the sense of didn't find it as interesting as I thought it would be. I think it definitely sets up the next few books, I guess, if there is a few more books really well. It definitely suffered from like second book syndrome. Uh, there were a lot of boring parts, a lot of incredible parts. The romance part of it, I definitely really enjoyed. Like it was for me, one of the strongest parts of the book. There were just parts of it that I was just like, can we move past this again? That's kind of like how I felt with a lot of the book. So I just ended up giving it a three star, which is not bad, but it's, you know, a three star. Okay, so next order of business, Nick and Charlie. I definitely want to read this. In fact, I think somebody commented on my video either today or yesterday like you need to read Nick and Charlie and I'm like I know so this is me finally going into Nick and Charlie and just reading this again I don't know what time frame this happens in like I don't know if it happens after volume three of the graphic novel if it happens after solitaire but I am gonna be reading this even though I I mean I'm cut up I just haven't read volume four so it's totally okay for me to read this I don't even know where I was going with that this is the next thing that I am reading and I am excited for just a wholesome read the font is literally you guys can't even see that that the font is literally massive like it's huge and there's also illustrations I can't talk really huh uh, there's illustrations in here why do I have a bookmark in here was I gonna read this at some point uh and to kind of replicate the feeling of the graphic novel so it's gonna be pretty cool and I'm gonna read this pretty quickly and then uh, I'll just decide what to do because skincare time doesn't come until night time when I don't want to read and rather want to watch some TV so I'll start this and I kind of do want to start Shadow of Night so I do think I'm gonna start Shadow of Night in this vlog just because I feel like going back into the All Souls world and I just need it so I think I'm gonna start that in this vlog too.
Hello, I am literally just thrown here reading Nick and Charlie. Literally tiny update, but I started cracking up at Nick calling the IKEA website a dangerous vortex. A dangerous vortex. I mean, I haven't heard anything that's truer than that, but like a dangerous vortex is one of the most hilarious things I've ever read. And I'm having a great time reading this. Certainly, I think because I'm so used to the graphic novels and like I already have the visual of the characters, it's great because I can picture everything like so well but I also love that when it's something important happening Alice Oseman does drop the illustrations which is really great to kind of visualize what exactly is being said by Nick or Charlie and it also has alternating chapters so you get like one Nick chapter one Charlie chapter and that's also pretty cool and I I don't know I didn't expect we're going into it like before I found out that Nick and Charlie like had like its own like little novella I didn't expect it to have any anything in prose form, but it works so well in tandem with the graphic novel. It's just great. And this definitely happens like after the ending, I'm gonna guess, of the graphic novels because if Nick is going to college, it's been talking about uh, Charlie's journey with anorexia and with eating disorders. And so that is the last thing that you see in volume three, I'm going to guess that theme is going to carry on in volume four. I do believe Heartstopper is meant to be six volumes. So this definitely does feel like it happens after the graphic novels, but I'm just going to keep reading this because I'm having a great time. Okay, you guys, I finished Nick and Charlie. I literally just finished it and oh my God. <laughs> I cried. I have to admit, a few tears did escape. I think what got me about this one is that obviously in comparison to what we'd seen before with Nick and Charlie, this was a little bit more mature. We got to see the struggle that both of these characters had with the theme of long distance relationships, going to college, one of them staying behind. And that is quite clearly the opposite of what they've been experiencing so far with their relationship. They're used to seeing each other every single day, sleeping at each other's houses, just riding with each other home, walking home together, having dates, and you can tell how tight-knit Nick and Charlie have become to the point where people basically say like, you're Nick and Charlie, and that's exactly how we as a reader feel. Like, it's like, you guys are Nick and Charlie. Like, you guys are literally unbeatable. If there is a definition of soulmate, if there is a definition of end-all be-all, it would be Nick and Charlie. And so I'm kind of glad that the side characters, Alid and Tao and Elle and Tori all felt that same way towards their relationship. It was just incredible to again see their journey. They're extremely human and it's just so realistic too with what a lot of people go through as they are graduating high school. I definitely grew to love Tori a lot in this book as opposed to the graphic novels. I think in the graphic novels we'd seen a more standoffish Tori and I am now quite curious to read Solitaire. I don't want the US cover of Solitaire though, so I'm gonna try and figure out how to get the matching cover for this of Solitaire, which is, I think it's pink. So I'm gonna try and figure it out, see where I can get it, because I definitely do wanna read that. I'm giving it a five stars. Like I just, it was exactly what I needed on this day off to equally made me sad as it made me happy. And so I am so glad that I got around to reading this. It only makes me more excited to read volume four. I did pull out a face mask, so definitely want to apply this. I will look crazy when I put this on. You'll barely be able to see my eyes and my mouth and my nose. I will literally have a full mask on, quite literally. So just prepare for that because I may look scary. I, I will not haunt you at night. And I am also going to start this bad boy right here, Shadow of Night. We're hopping onto it. I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> I'm very scared because I want to love this as much as I loved book one, but I am definitely going into this with zero expectations. Oh, my friend is here. Okay, y'all, I'll be back. I just want y'all to know 
Right now, I am playing the part of Gavin in the play. Gavin, shout out to you. The only thing I'm missing is the Corella mask. That's what I am missing, but I think I look equally as crazy. So, hi. Like husband, like wife, ASMR. We love it. This is me gonna gonna this is me wrapping up the vlog. See it's so late I can barely talk so a last of days before I officially wrap it up I did start shadow of night and I started this as I was doing my skincare You guys saw I looked hella crazy with that face mask could barely breathe then I did my serum my moisturizer While I was watching 911 in tandem with reading this which I didn't read that much obviously because I was half paying attention to both things But I did manage to read 20 pages of shadow of night so I did read the entirety of The Damned, the entirety of Nick and Charlie, did read this, watched a movie, did some skincare. I basically did all that I had on my list for a very self-care centered day. And just again, a tiny update into how Shadow of Night is going. Obviously already tabbing. I am not using my usual annotation system just because I am running out of pink tabs. I have to switch around. I love being back in the All Souls world. Matthew and Diana, as you guys know, have my heart and I just love their dynamic. I am I'm really curious to see how Matthew is going to behave given the circumstance of how this book starts and how it progresses. So I will definitely keep you guys updated in a weekly vlog as I keep reading because I am starting a weekly vlog tomorrow. That being said though, this is obviously the end of the vlog. It's like almost midnight. It's time for me to call it a night and I hope that you guys enjoyed this little self-care moment. Again, I always say this, it's like equally as important to recognize the good days as well as the bad days and just recognize when we need to take a step back and I suck at taking my own advice. I feel like I often say it to other people, but I rarely take that advice myself. So it was just one of those days where I had to recognize that I had to take a step back, had to relax, had to give myself some me time, which again is equally as important as working your butt off. And so I really am glad that I took the day off and that I was just able to relax. So yes, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what you've read recently, as well as if you've read any of the books that I read today. Leave those in the comments down below as well. If you reach the end of the video, let's leave down below. Oh no, yeah, we already did the yellow emoji. Let's leave some phone emojis down below. I feel like that really fits with the theme of Nick and Charlie. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more bookish content. Constantly uploading videos. You guys know the drill. You guys know how it is. I also live stream every Friday doing weekly reading sprints. And if you want more content, more exclusive access to videos, exclusive access to videos, exclusive access to me, early access to videos, more live streams, book clubs, buddy reads, a discord server, everything in between. I do have a Patreon. We call ourselves the Citadel and that is linked down below as well as all of my social medias. And yeah, I love you guys and I shall see you on the next one. Bye guys.